Hillsborough County has opened a majority of its conservation parks, trails, and nature preserves to give residents additional options for recreation and exercise. While parks can provide an escape and excitement, county leaders are urging residents to take precautions to protect themselves. To help stop the spread of COVID-19 while in public places, use common sense. Stay home and avoid parks if you're feeling sick. Practice social distancing avoid groups or gatherings larger than 10, and stay at least six feet from others while exercising. In addition to social distancing, Hillsborough County leaders continue to urge residents to wear cloth face coverings when in community settings. Bring your own water. Though parks are opening, many amenities will remain closed. Prepare for your visit by packing necessary items like hand sanitizer, and it's a good idea to bring your own disinfectant wipes to wipe down any public surfaces before touching or when touching public equipment. But remember, don't flush them after using. Residents who do not abide by the social distancing requirements or listen to instructions from county staff while enjoying the parks will be asked to leave the property. We encourage you to visit hcflgov.com dot net slash stay safe for up-to-date information. This is a battle we've never faced in my lifetime. I want to tell you about 416 of the most amazing people. Every day I get to see their skill, professionalism, and dedication. Their commitment to protect and improve the health of everyone in Hillsborough County. The last two months, they've been on the front line of a battle with a very dangerous enemy, COVID-19. And they've risen to the challenge in the most amazing, heroic way. Everyone has contributed, sacrificing their personal life, which they put on hold. They're making a difference for everyone they help. And every day, I get stopped and told just how amazing they are. I'm proud and blessed to work with them, my second family. A lot of things have been canceled, a lot of things have been postponed, but definitely not kindness. And we want to spread the kindness in our community and know that our first responders are still here for you. And thank you for staying at home for us and we are here for you. So today we are here to surprise a little boy who is turning nine. He just moved to the county with his family and he's very quiet, very shy, but has an affinity for fire trucks. And so what better way to welcome him to Hillsborough County and also maybe celebrate a little bit of his birthday by bringing one of our very own fire engines and a rescue to do a little drive-by, especially during this time. We hear someone's having a birthday here. Is someone having a birthday here? Happy birthday, Mary Jane. Thanks, babe. Yeah. Isn't that Hillsborough County leaders and local health experts want to get a clearer picture on how many residents may currently have the COVID-19 coronavirus. To help those efforts, testing criteria has been expanded. Now, any resident wishing to be tested for COVID-19 can call 813-272-5900 weekdays between Perfect. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome to the Hillsborough County Historic Resources Review Board meeting. Today is Tuesday, May 19th, 2020. Uh, today we are meeting virtually due to the effects of the coronavirus, uh, but we are still having our meeting as scheduled with the agenda as planned. Um, with that, uh, we'll be going over the agenda in order. Um, so first, we'd like to have our call to order and our quorum check. Nancy, do we have a quorum here? Yes, you do, Mr. Chair. Okay, perfect. Sounds good. Um, and with that quorum, we actually have a, a new member on our committee uh, for this month. Um, Charles Nelson, thank you very much for, for joining our committee. Um, Charles is uh, officially on board as a historian. 
Um, he has a master's in American history from George Mason University um, and is an avid member of the Tampa Bay History Center. Um, anything else, Charles, you'd like to add to that? You're more than welcome to say hi and introduce yourself to the rest of the community. Well, it's, I'm delighted to be a, a member of this board and look forward to eventually meeting all of you. I've lived in Hillsborough County, Eastern and Southern Hillsborough County uh, since 1998 and I've spent uh, most of my historical career here working on South, South County and East County issues. So I'm really excited to be able to join this board and hopefully can add something uh, to our discussion. So look forward to meeting all of you. Welcome. Absolutely. Yep. Well, well, welcome to our committee. Um, we, we apologize that the first one had to be virtual, but you know, once we get to meet in person again, uh, we look forward to, to meeting you in person. Thank you again for volunteering to serve on the committee. Um, sure. Uh, with that, um, I know it's a little more challenging to introduce ourselves um, when we're on virtual, but uh, everybody can see each other here virtually as well. Um, as we get started, um, I'd just like to, to point out a couple features. Um, if you aren't speaking, we ask that you kindly put yourself on mute. Um, and if you do have a question or comment, please turn um, to raise your hand in the chat functionality. I have the capability to see who raises their hand in the chat functionality. Um, and then I will certainly call on you if you have any questions, comments uh, for discussion or anything like that. Um, so with that, moving on to our regularly scheduled items, uh, going to the approval of the February meeting minutes. Um, if everybody had a chance to review those um, and if we have any comments or corrections for the February minutes, please state those now. Okay. Seeing no comments or corrections needed, uh, do we have a motion for approval? I move to approve the meeting of the February 18th minutes. Okay, so we have a, it. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Uh, we have a motion by Becky and we have a second uh, by Ryan. Um, any other comments about the meeting minutes from last month or from February? Okay, uh, here are none. All those in favor of approving the motion meeting minutes, say aye. 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 Any opposed, aye. say nay. <clears throat> meeting minutes are approved. Um, but since this is a virtual meeting, any public comment that we're gonna have for this meeting was supposed to be submitted to us prior to the meeting. Um, since we had no public comment, uh, we will skip over that section um, and we do not have any guest speakers other than those that are currently on the agenda. So we'll save those for later. Uh, now moving on to staff items, item C-1. Uh, Tom, can you go over the letter at uh, the Walter Hunter Road property? Tom, I think you might be on mute. We can't hear you. Thank you. I'm uh, sorry. Show yes. up for the meeting. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, so item C1 and item C2 uh, are informational items for the board. Uh, uh, these are the letters that I sent out following your last meeting, uh, uh, which had uh, two reviews, one for the demolition of a structure that was on the uh, historic resources inventory, the other for a roof replacement. Uh, it, Everybody has a copy of the letter. If you'd like, I can put the letters on the screen. Uh, Mr. Holman, what's your wish on that? Uh, no, we have the letters in our packet, so I don't okay, think they're right. And they're informational only. So mm -hmm. both of those items are, again, strictly informational uh, uh, in the results of letters from your last meeting. OK, sounds good. Thank you very much. Any questions or comments for Tom on those? OK. Sounds good. Moving on to item uh, D number one, the replacement of the windows at the Knight House, which is located at 2934 Stearns Road in Lithia. Um, Tom, would you go over this a little bit? And then we'll introduce our guest, Daniel, to speak a little bit more about that. Yes. So what we have here is uh, an old house. It's on the historic resources inventory, but is not a designated landmark. So your role in, in this matter uh, you do not have the authority to approve or deny the window project because it's not a landmark. However, uh, the applicant, because they are changing out the window materials and the design of some of the windows, uh, the project is required to become before this board uh, for your review and then comment as to whether you believe the replacement windows pose no effect or an adverse effect on the historic resource. 
uh, the, the house that we're talking about, uh, I've included in your backup, the Florida master site file survey report. The house is known as the Knight's house. Uh, it is a frame vernacular structure. Uh, it was built approximately 1890. According to the report, it, the house originally served as a parsonage for the Methodist church located in the southeast corner of Pearson Road and Durant Road. Uh, it was purchased by the Knight family and moved to its present location sometime around 1910. Uh, the inventory, uh, as far as the evaluation of the site, states that this residence reflects the typical design and construction of frame vernacular structures during the latter part of the 19th century and is not considered to be eligible for local landmarking or for the National Register of Historic Places. I'd also point out that the survey uh, notes that uh, the windows had been previously replaced. As a, the survey was done in 1998, but sometime before then, but after original construction of the home at an unknown date, the survey says that the windows had been replaced. Um, no, uh, so on the old part of the house, uh, the, uh, the home, the windows are two over two. And um, because there's an addition to the house, there's the two story original portion and a one story addition to the rear. Um, uh, the windows on, on the two story uh, portion of the house are wood windows, two over two design with maybe the exception of one window. Uh, the property owner had prepared a graphic uh, that I had sent along. Uh, to show exactly the windows that uh, you know on, throughout the structure, um, and then um, on the one-story part, uh, uh, there's aluminum windows of various designs. Uh, most of those are going to be replaced by one-over-one one windows, and again, that's uh, described uh, in the. Uh, sketches that were provided by the applicant and uh, let me just and these were in uh, everyone's backup and uh you know they're just hand drawn but very adequate i think for the purposes of showing exactly what the window replacements would be um so unless you have any further questions for me uh, uh i would introduce mr daniel kang of window world who is the contractor for the project and, and representing the homeowners and it would be available for any further questions you might have. Mr. Hello, Kang. Everyone. Hello. Hello, Mr. Kang. Hello. Can you hear me? Yep. Yes, yes, we can. Okay. Okay. All right. Good. Good. So, um, was there anything that you wanted me to go over specifically about the project? or just uh, in detail what the customers were, were wishing? Yeah, Mr. King, can you go over a little bit of a project overview, what the customers requested, and then what you're presenting to us today for approval? Okay, so um, on the original structure, uh, they were wood windows uh, with a two over two uh, grid design, uh, which we've duplicated on the new replacements. Um, all the replacements on the house are a vinyl uh, window. They're an insulated product, um, Energy Star compliant, uh, which is code uh, for, for now for replacing windows because uh, they have to meet a certain efficiency rating. Uh, otherwise, we're not able to even get a, a building permit to install them. Um, so what we tried to do was as closely match the existing ones as possible in the original structure, which when I met the homeowner originally, she had informed me um, that that was what was requested uh, to match the design for design. But when we came to the extension of the house, which I don't actually know when that was installed, um, uh, out of your, if they're on your records, but it's probably maybe in the 1950s or 1960s, um, they had put aluminum windows. So when we replace those, we also have to use a, a vinyl product because the modern aluminum window, um, in most cases, don't qualify for Energy Star standards uh, because the aluminum is far too conductive where vinyl is not. Um, the customer had chose to go from a pattern that was maybe six over six or eight over eight, depending on the size of the window, 
to a uh, one over one, um, mostly because it was facing the yard. Um, and these windows were, were barely visible from, from the street. Um, so at the time we expected that that might not have been an issue or shouldn't have been an issue because they weren't original type of material. They were in a wood uh, product on the historical part of the house. So um, we had uh, assumed that that would be okay. So I, I suppose we're, we're here mostly to, to speak about the extension of the house rather than the original part of the house, uh, because that is going to match uh, what we're removing. It's just the glass design on the extension will be different. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Kang. Appreciate it. Um, any comments um, for Daniel? Anything about uh, either the, the windows that are going to be installed on the existing structure or windows that are going to be installed on the addition to the house? Can't find how I raised my hand. <laughs> yep. Go ahead, Becky. Like this. <laughs> yeah. Just go like this. <laughs> um, so, if I'm understanding this correctly, the older part of the house will have the grid, and then the newer section will have no grid. Yes, that's correct. And the, the older section, or excuse me, the newer section of the house, the addition, that's also rear facing. Um, that's something that we, you, you can't see from the front of the house from the street. Correct. And that in our picture, I think, is the one that shows the air conditioning unit underneath. That's correct. Yeah, that, that's the view from the backyard. So those will be solid windows with no grid. Uh, well, they're going to be operable windows that um, slide up and down. Yes, but but no grid. And those are the ones that are currently aluminum. That's correct. Okay. Go ahead, Charles. Uh, yes, you cut out just a little bit, Mr. Kang, when you're explaining the reasons you weren't going to do wood on the older section was for what reason? Um, well, we were actually didn't discuss that. Um, it also, price is a concern, um, longevity of the product, um, maintenance of the product where, where vinyl is a low maintenance, a high efficiency, um, affordable solution to a large project, which consists of, of 27 windows on the house. Um, wood products as a replacement in Florida have, have not really been uh, favorable with manufacturers who have tried uh, large companies such as Pell and Anderson, um, where you may actually see a, a life cycle of 15 years uh, before they start to deteriorate. And um, that's at that point where that manufacturer itself no longer warranties the, the frame product. Um, I myself in, in the past few years have taken many wood type of replacement windows like Anderson and Pella outside of a house uh, within 10 years of their installation uh, due to uh, moisture problems that they just can't eliminate uh, from it. So <laughs> where, where the homeowner just saw this very large project to do, it, it made the most sense uh, to use the most maintenance free uh, material possible. Um, and from the street, when you're looking at a vinyl window and a, and a wood window, uh, they're very similar in, in, in frames because now frames are, they're extruded. Uh, so they have contours on the frames on the exterior. So they're not just flat panels like they would be on an aluminum window. Um, so they're more aesthetically uh, uh, pleasing uh, compared to a lot of the other replacements out there. Um, and I don't know if the homeowner had researched uh, wood windows that far, um, but I know her wish was to have the, the vinyl windows uh, replacing them. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We have any other questions or comments for Mr. Kang? Okay. Um, Tom, I have a, a procedural question for you. Um, are we, can we vote um, to have an adverse or no adverse effect <clears throat> Um, you know, can we do multiple votes? You know, let's say for the, the, the uh, front of the house, the older portion, and then have a different vote for the, the rear facing, you know, with renovation, or are we looking for one vote for the entire project? Um, I would ask Nancy for assistance in that. I don't see anything in the code that would preclude you from doing that, Nancy. 
No, I agree. If you um, want to break it up into um, the different um, sections of the house, that would be fine under the code. Okay. Um, obviously, that's at the pleasure of the committee. So at, at this point, if, if we don't have any questions or, or comments left, um, our next uh, task is to uh, render a, an adverse or no adverse effect um, on the historic uh, resource here at this property based on the information presented by Mr. Kang with the window replacement. Um, so with that, do we have any questions or comments or a motion to coming forward from any of the committee members? Nico, I make a motion that has no adverse effect. I will second that. Okay. okay. Uh, allow me also to remind the board that uh, uh, along with your motions, uh, if you would provide like one or two reasons that the motion is based on, uh, that's just good practice. So, and I'm sorry, can who made the original motion? Tom Santarlis. Tom Santarlis. Okay. And the second from Kurt Brown. So, Mr. You. Santarlis, if you could, uh, you know, add uh, one or two reasons uh, for, uh, on the basis of your motion, that would be helpful. Sure, I believe that the uh, replacement windows, if they don't have uh, a visual differentiation between the current windows uh, when looking at the property from afar, I don't believe that'll have an adverse effect on this property from a historical perspective. And if I may add the fact that it's not going to be eligible towards um, landmarking, makes it less, less critical. Okay. <clears throat> and like presented, unless absolutely necessary, the wood windows are a lot more mean. Yep. Uh, okay. So we have a, a motion and a second um, that the window uh, replacement, as presented by Dr. Gang, will have a no adverse effect uh, on the historic resource. Um, any other questions or comments on that motion? Okay. Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All those opposed say nay. Okay. So, Mr. Kang, I'll be writing up a letter uh, in the next day or two, and I'll be emailing you that letter. And then you will include that letter uh, in your building permit application for the project. And what that letter does is clears the red flag so your permit application can be processed. Wonderful. I thank okay. you very much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kang. Appreciate okay. it. Thank you. Okay. Bye, all. Okay. Well, with that, that covers all of the existing items that need to be discussed on our agenda. Um, do we have any new business that needs to be discussed at this meeting today? Okay. Um, obviously, we don't know how long the effects of the coronavirus are going to last. And so as far as our next meeting, uh, obviously, that will depend on if we have any items that come up for review, um, where we meet, if we're going to meet in person or if we're going to meet virtually. So that obviously just depends. So pay attention to your inboxes for that. Um, and actually, Mr. Holman, I, we anticipate there will be a June meeting because the same property owner uh, the, the, uh, that you just reviewed uh, now wants to install a shed. Uh, however, she let me know that much too late to get on this agenda. So she wants to install a shed in the back of the property, and I think uh, something to do with one of the with the driveway on the property. So uh, I anticipate and uh, that you will have a meeting next month uh, scheduled. Uh, I also expect that it will be a virtual meeting again, based on what's happening with other county hearings. Okay. Sounds good. Mr. Chairman, uh, before we adjourn, I think it's notable to let Mr. Gribben, Mr. Brewer know that they did a very good job of putting this together. Everything was seamless and, and it flowed very well. So I would disagree guys. totally. <laughs> <laughs> some of you were included and some of us weren't. <laughs> yeah, I, I heartily agree. They did a great job with this. Um, as a training point, one thing, Bill, like I, I couldn't remember how to uh, the, when you want to raise your hand and the, and the right side of the screen, everybody's mm -hmm. names appear. I couldn't figure out how to make the names appear again. Okay. 
How does I've that done work? lots of virtual meetings, including public ones. And personally, I never saw one so disorganized. Oh, really? Mm. Kurt, Kurt, did you not get the um, meeting, the call from the testing and stuff like nope. that? Nope. No, none of that. And I let Tom know that, and I tried calling him. I mean, the meetings last week, the testing to make sure it all worked. I, I did not get any of that. And I made them know, let them know that I didn't get any of that. And, and what is your email address, sir? BBD888 yeah. at gmail.com. Okay. Well, I, I do apologize for that deeply. Um, and we will look in to make sure that we had the correct contact information. Um, I'm the one that, that resent the invite out to you uh, the last minute right before the meeting. Yeah, which you can't um, get in through. You have to have the link. You can't get in through the WebEx site. And that was not explained. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, let's go ahead and adjourn and then we can bring this up off record. I think that's a good idea. So with that, any other questions or comments or ideas for discussion? Okay, hearing none, we are adjourned. <laughs>